Hello. Alternative lending is the process of lending money through digital platforms. The American Bankers Association has deemed it as a natural evolution of banking. However, the inability to make repayments and investigations concerning the credibility of some alternative lenders poses a possible threat to the future of the industry. I'm talking to Matey Bezerra, the author of our recent research on this sector. First of all, Matey, how does alternative lender work and why would an SME or a, or a single individual want to go down that route? So alternative lending, also known as peer-to-peer -peer and marketplace lending, is any type of lending made through a digital platform that uses non-traditional data. So lenders use the borrower's data, they use data from third parties, and then they use algorithms to calculate a risk score. And based on this risk score, they decide uh, whether to approve or to reject the loan. In terms of the target audience, it's pretty much individuals and small, media, uh, small and medium enterprise they are undeserved by traditional financial institutions such as students or small companies with less than one year of operation. Okay, they sound quite high risk sector. So how do the platform providers and the investors um, rely on such a risky sector to, to, to do business in? And uh, how, how does the, uh, could this be another financial crash, maybe 2008 all over again? Well, there are some similarities with crash in 2008 because as well as what happened now, the alternative lending relies on derivatives. So derivatives are pretty much an asset that you will receive uh, the value in future. In 2008, banks were selling derivatives of mortgages that were offered to individuals that could not actually afford their mortgages. Then on the due date, the derivatives were not paid. This time, alternative lendings are doing the same process, which is called securitization. But the main difference is that they use algorithms and big data to calculate whether the person can or not pay for the mortgage. So in this sense, we believe that it's safer. And of course, it's going to have some problems initially, but we believe that the algorithms are going to be improved in a way that this is going to be the future for loan applications. Okay, so if this is the future for loan applications, how do the traditional lenders, the banks, how do they react to this sector? What can they do? Well, the first thing is focus on customer experience. I believe that we all know how difficult it is to apply for a lending in a traditional bank. We need to sign papers, documents, uh, and we need to submit loads of documents as well. And it may take almost three months to receive the money. So definitely the banks must adopt a customer-centric approach to improve the customer experience. And also they should start offering alternative lending as well to serve these individuals and companies that are underserved at the moment. Okay. Um, looking at the research, Juniper's forecasting a very high growth this sector, 400% over five years. What, what's really driving that growth? The alternative lending it has a very short approval period, it's very easy to use and it sometimes has lower rates. So we believe that they are going to increase and that in 2023 alternative lendings will lend 588 billion, which would represent 41% of small and medium enterprises financing. Also, we predict that the revenue taken by the platforms are going to increase from 30 billion in 2008 to 137 billion in 2023. Big market. So, to summarize, what recommendations does Juniper offer to alternative lenders? There are two main aspects. The first aspect is the algorithms. So, the algorithms must be improved to improve the approval rate. Right now, 50% of the pre approved loans are rejected because of how detailed the algorithms are. So this definitely must change so they can approach a bigger audience. And a second and major problem is regulation. As alternative lending is a new industry, there are not many laws that apply to this type of companies. So it sometimes may give the impression that their operations are not completely legal or not fair. So these companies must 
to adopt compliance strategies to regulate themselves and to make sure that everything is clear to the customers, they are very transparent, and also that the algorithms have not a discriminatory approach. So they do not discriminate the borrowers because of age, uh, address or gender, for instance. Thank you very much, Macy. If you'd like to learn more about our services in this area, then please get in touch. Thank you very much.